Well, hello. Today I'm going to do one of those Survivor Pens videos. What I'm going to talk about is my Caveco V14S. Uh, in a Survivor Pens video, I revisit pens that I last did a video on five or more years ago. And uh, as it turns out, that's getting to be quite a long list. So uh, today we're going to talk about the Caveco V14S, which, well, there it is, <laughs> you can see has been in my pocket all day. So let's dive into it. This is the Caveco V14S. This is the pen that got me into the vintage world. And you can see it's a fairly plain, ordinary, slim black pen. One of the first vintage pens I ever owned. I was wiping some dust off there. Uh, it's identified down here very subtly as a V14S with a fine nib. And then here on the cap band we have Caveco. And that's it. Well, okay, that's not it. And it has the Caveco thingy at the top on the finial. The other finial has nothing. So pretty unassuming. Uh, the S stands for steel because it has a stainless steel cap. Apparently they also came with black plastic caps. Unscrew it. It's a uh, not a hooded nib, kind of a V-shaped nib with a nice bit of tipping there. Uh, I have it full of ink but this is basically the ink window. The it's a segmented ink window up here and then down here you just kind of see the little bit of it going into the feed. A piston filler pen. This is the piston turning knob. And I bought this pen uh, five, six years ago, something like that. And this is one of the ones that, one of the first two vintage pens I ever bought and this is what led me down the vintage rabbit hole. So let's take a look at how it writes. So again, this is the Caveco V14S. The ink in it that I have is right now, I'm trying to use up my stash of Aurora Black. I think you can see this is a very businesslike, very fine writer. Uh, as far as flex, of course not. Maybe if you squint a little, you might pick up a little line variation, but not a whole lot. Because this isn't that kind of pen. This is a pen for writing. Uh, a little bit slimmer than a Lamy 2000. Do I have one here? No, I don't. So we'll just use our imaginations. But slimmer than a Lamy 2000. I find it comfortable, but I'm used to vintage pens. If you're not into vintage, you may not be used to how slim some of them were. Uh, wetness and flow. I think you can see that this is a reliable pen. By the way, made out of the same precious black resin that Montblanc 149s are made out of. For whatever that's worth. A smear test. You know, wettish. Um, reverse writing. You know. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Just as smooth as it is the regular way, but that's definitely an extra fine or maybe even an ultra extra fine. Um, somewhere I had a paper where I could measure that, but I mislaid it. I'll have to print it out again. All right, and since we're doing a uh, revisit, this is a survivor pen, we should do a quote. Didn't really think this one through, but we'll live. So back when I was doing these reviews, I think I was still doing quotes, but one thing I was not doing back then is the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. So let's see how this pen does. Remember, a light touch. And right there, I know it looks like it skipped, but honestly, it was too light of a touch. So I think it passed that one. 
So that is the Caveco V14S. Just a very nice, very reliable pen. One that I enjoy very much. Uh, and which gave me my taste for vintage, strangely enough. So that was the Caveco V14S. That was my very first foray into the vintage world. And it was a good one. So good that uh, that's pretty much what I've been buying ever since, is vintage. And I even got brave finally and started repairing my own vintage. And it all started with one nice little pen. Uh, you can see it fits in the pocket very easily. Uh, now one thing with vintage is they do tend to be slimmer pens than modern pens. You don't have these big girthy monsters normally. Uh, but if you can deal with that, there are some really, really good pens to be found in the vintage world. Uh, the Caveco V series contains a lot of good ones. And uh, German manufacturer from the original Caveco, you know, this, the plastic that this is made out of is the same plastic used on the Mont Blanc 149. Uh, it's a good looking pen, it writes well. Uh, gold nib, if that excites you. Uh, piston filler, and I really like it's very uh, minimalistic branding. I was trying to think of a, the right word there. Very minimalistic branding. You know, just a little bit on engraving on the barrel, just a little bit on the pen cap, and uh, calling it good. And yeah, let the pen speak for itself, so I appreciate that. And it's very evocative to me. I mean, I look at this pen and I just think 1950s, 1960s. It's the classy part of that, not the garish part of it. But Anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I expect that in five, more, five or so more years, there will be another Survivor Pens video with the Caveco V14S. And they're out there. The, these Caveco Pens are out there. They're not on the top tier of collector pens, so you can find these Caveco Pens sometimes at surprisingly low cost. You might have to do a little cleaning, might have to repair a piston here and there. I've... I've got one with an interesting nib problem that I haven't figured out yet. Uh, but on the whole, good pens, good reliable pens, and I wish Caveco still made pens of this quality. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you about this pen again in five more years. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.